Yeah, folks, okay, this time I want to run through the C style of uh, handling file I.O. So this is very much like the C++ version that we ran through last time around. And it's just this time we're going to use the C STDIO library, which means that we're going to have some different data types and some different functions to use. But the concepts are the same. We still go through this idea of trying to open a file, check if it worked, do our reading or writing, and then close it up at the end. We've still got the same basic ideas of checking for the end of the input file, you know, if we want to go through and process till we hit the end of it. Um, and we've still got the same sorts of ideas that, you know, we can read a line of text, or we can read a single character, or we can read a single word. So most of the same ideas apply. We're just using the CSTDIO routines instead of the FStream ones. All right. So, for this one, again, we're going to use the CSTDIO library. And the difference is last time we had those ifstream and ofstream variables to distinguish between input files and output files. The file type that we're going to use for this one is file star for both of them. So file uppercase and star. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I probably should have been consistent about where I put the star here. The star can actually go at the end of the file or at the beginning of the, the variable name. So I'm going to use two variables here, one for my input file and one for my output file. They're both of this data type file star. And we'll talk about pointers um, actually later this week, which will explain what the star is all about. But we're going to have these two variables, fpin and fpout, that eventually we're going to use for input and output. And same sort of idea as with our fstream approach, we want to open a specific file and associate it with our variable. So let's say I want to open a file for reading and associate that with my fpin to do, to do the actual reading, right? Open a file for output and associate it with fpout. Now the function that we use to do this is called fopen, and then you give it the file name. And again, this can be a character array or it can be a bunch of hard-coded text. And then we tell it whether we want to open it to read or to write or actually to append is another option. So you pass it the string R or the string W to indicate whether you want to read, to read from the file or write stuff into the file. So whether you want it to be for input or for output. And again, read opens the file, you know, fails if the file doesn't exist. Write will overwrite an existing file or create a new file if one didn't exist. There is an append option, and that basically opens an existing file, but adds things to the end of it instead of writing over top of the old contents. So if you use write, it wipes out the old contents entirely, they're gone, and starts you know writing new fresh output. If you use append, it adds it to the end of what was already there. Again, we want to check, in this, check if this succeeded. Now, the data value that we can use to check that is null or zero or false, depending on how you want to think about it. So if I do something like, say, let's try to open some file to read from, and I'm storing the value in my fpn variable, if fpn is zero or null or false, so if, uh, if not fpn, it failed. So this is a nice simple check to see if the file open worked or didn't. So again, if it didn't work, then I'll print out and couldn't open the file. Otherwise, it opened OK, so I can do things with it and then eventually close it. So again, slightly different syntax for checking if it worked, but it's the same concept. Now, for input and output, we're going to use variations on printf and scanf. It's just that they're going to be working from a file instead of standard input or standard output. So they've got this f appended in front, so f printf or f scanf. And so for f printf, you give it the output file variable, and then our usual printf style of output, you know, a string x is and a percent d, and then whatever value is going to go in there. So this would print out, for instance, x is three and a new line into whatever file was open. F scanf again works like scanf. It's just we have the extra variable at the front specifying which file. So my fpn, and then whatever the format string is, and then whatever variable I'm trying to read into. Now, there's another function to read a single character. 
So f get c, and you, again, you tell it which file, and it returns the next character. Another one for reading an entire line of text into a character array. So in this case, the order is a little different. You give the array name first, the array that you want to write into, copy into, the maximum size to read in, so just so you don't overflow your array, and then, pardon me, that should be my fp in, um, the file you want to read from. So that should be fp in at the end there. I will go off and correct my slides in a moment. We can, again, check to see if we've hit the end of an input file. So this time the function is called feof, you know, file, end of file. And it returns true if we're not at, or pardon me, returns true if we've hit the end of the file. So I'm going to say if not feof, fpn, we haven't hit the end of the file yet, so I can keep going, keep doing whatever it is I want to do. And so again, same sort of logic, just different functions. And again, to close a file, the function is called fclose, and you just pass it whatever the, the variable is for the open file. So again, similar sorts of constructs. And again, just to show a kind of a whole example here, so we're including our library. I've got here in this case uh, just a couple of hard-coded, or a couple of file names stored in character arrays. So in.txt is going to be my input file, out.txt is going to be my output file. I've got my couple of file star variables here for fp in and fp out. I'm going to try and open that first one for reading. And if it didn't work, I'm going to say, oh, no, sorry, I couldn't open that file, right? And I'll print out the name of the file. Otherwise, I'm going to go through and try and do a copy and then eventually close that opened input file. So in here, I want to try and open the output file. So again, I'm going to try and open that output file for writing. And if it didn't work, I'll give an error message. Otherwise, I'm going to go through and do my copy and then close the output file. And again, for that copy, here I'm going to do it character by character. So I'm going to use fgetc to read the next single character from fpn, make sure I wasn't at the end of the file. And if I wasn't at the end of the file, then I'll write that character into the output. And again, just keep going while I'm not at the end of the input file. All right, so same basic logic, it's just we're using different functions. All right, so now you should be able to tackle file I.O. in whichever format uh, seems the most suitable for you. I will leave that one there.